Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports, brought to you by KillCliffCBD.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show, kids. Uh, he's one of your favorites. You guys said it was one of the best interviews mm -hmm. of all time. Uh, you know him better as America's favorite dirtbag, Aubrey Huff. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the show. Last time you were here, man, we talked about your podcast. And not only did it launch, but it ended up being on the charts as high as like 15 in America. Yeah, we got it up to 15. I was, shit, man, I was as surprised as any, man. I mean, I guess toxic masculinity does go far in today's society still. It does. And I, I think a lot of people um, are looking for that today. And to be like totally, completely honest with you, because I know it sounds crazy to say that of like, oh, who the fuck wants to listen to that? People just want to hear a voice that is similar to them and have conversations that is similar to them. Not everybody's wearing a man bun and a pussy drinking fucking truly. You know, yes, I'm a little truly girl today, but not a pussy in real life. And I think because of how brash you are in your social media and everything else, it is a welcome refresher from all the other canned shit that is out there. So I wasn't shocked, Dan. Mm -hmm. Were you when you saw no, those charts? No, it's him and uh, Brian, Mr. Mayhem from Playboy Radio, right? Mm -hmm. We met him yep. uh, in October of 2018, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian's a great dude. Great Super guy. funny guy, too. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. We just recorded an episode for a Ju uh, Fourth of July special with mm -hmm. Joy Villa, mm -hmm. the lady that wore for the Grammys the Trump dress, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we got that coming out on Saturday. And, dude, we were talking about this very thing today. The one, you know, what does America mean to me? And for me, America means we've got to get back to that toxic masculinity. But when America was great, where guys were actually men, we were drinking beer, bourbon, shitting everywhere, barbecuing, you know, didn't care whatever other people thought, you know, tough uh, capitalist Americans. And we are, are being under attack by these participation trophy generation winners that are now grown up and they've been told they're special and they've got their soy lattes. They've never fucking seen a weight room in their lives. They're wearing the tight blue jeans with the penny loafers <laughs> driving a hybrid Kia that says I'm with her and feel the burn. We are in a <laughs> fucking disaster right now. We need more toxic masculinity. And I'm not talking about the toxic masculinity where you beat your wife and kids and you know, go to jail for doing blow. I'm talking about the toxic masculinity that's a protector, a provider, mm -hmm. that, that uh, takes care of his family, that uh, stands up for the little guy, that doesn't take shit from bullies. We need more men like that. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, you know, unfortunately, in the time we're living in, uh, everybody's kind of locked indoors and you're just listening to other people's opinions and thoughts and feelings on everything. Uh, whether it's, you know, the white guilt over everything that's going on during the protests or whether or not you're on the mask or no mask crowd, which let's face it is, is kind of separated people politically. I well, here's like. the deal with that whole thing. Look, certain like an, uh, a mask can definitely help whatever the fuck, right? There's no question. That's why they exist. They've existed for a long time, but the amount of bad information that the nation's top scientists have come out with since March, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. There's never been, such a stream of of wrong information from alleged experts ever in the history of fucking medicine so far as i can tell yeah and what's wrong with just admitting hey man this is a disease that we know nothing about really and we're just kind of fucking winging it at this point what's wrong with saying that um from either political party or any fucking expert anyone what's wrong with well, saying I, that? I think what's really really troubling i don't even know if it's troubling it's it's, it's almost comical because it's so predictable is we all knew the second wave was coming. We all knew this was coming. I, I, I called it three months ago. You know, we started slowly opening back up. You know, everybody's starting to go outside. Beaches were opening up. Nobody's wearing masks. I'm like, we're getting a little bit too, we're getting a little bit too close to the uh, election here. We're going to have that second wave coming. Sure as shit, here we are. And I got a buddy in Arizona who's been hearing from a lot of doctors. And apparently what they're doing now in Arizona, because the numbers are so high, apparently it's skyrocketing is they're having virtual doctor's meetings online and they're diagnosing patients with COVID-19 without even coming in or testing, just over the computer. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, it's it's absolutely insane. This is as everything to do with political agenda. Yes, I, I've actually, well, since the last time we talked, I didn't know anybody that had COVID. Since then, I've, I've known two that have. And both of these people, one was an 11-year-old boy, 
who they locked him up in his room for five days. He played Fortnite every day, ate like a champion, had a little scratchy throat, and he recovered. His family didn't catch it. The other guy was a guy my age, and he just felt tired, went to the doctor, had COVID. He was working out the entire week. He had COVID. He didn't, like, he wasn't coughing, breathing heavy. He just, he was basically asymptomatic. Sure, um, yeah. And he, and, he, and he recovered instantly. And so is it real? Yes. Is it as bad as what people think it is? Um, I don't think for the general population it is. For people older, yes, absolutely. But to be fair, and I hate to say this because somebody has to, because you're older and you know you have a little bit more problems health-wise, is it fair to shut down the majority of the country and ruin lives? It, 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 to me, it's simple. If you're an older person, stay home. Right. And that's really all there is to it. Um, so on, on the baseball front, on the sports front, uh, you know, they've they've got this grand reopening plan. Um, I'm looking at the landscape now with all these athletes going down with COVID. I don't know how this is possible for sports to start. Um, are we fucking living in a goddamn uh, wonderland thinking that that baseball and basketball and football are going to come back? You know, I, it, it's kind of interesting. You know, when I played in 2009, we had the co- we had the H1N1 flu in 2009. Mm-hmm. And I knew of seven or eight guys that got that disease. They went home, quarantined. They were, got, they were back in a week. The, the whole damn country didn't shut down. Major League Baseball didn't shut down. And we continued playing baseball. You know, now these guys are opting out due to safety reasons, uh, being with their families, et cetera. And, and this is nothing more than guys – being, I think, listening too much of the fear mongering in the mainstream media. And I, I think it is kind of a one of those things where you're just, it's kind of a cock tease. I don't see it happening. You got too many guys now, they're voicing concerns about the safety. Mm-hmm. And, and I think there was Ryan Zimmerman came out today, a pitcher. I know Ian Desmond mm-hmm. opted out. And I think for me, the more guys start following down this every day, the more and more baseball is going to be pressured to just cancel the whole season, which I, I'm surprised they haven't done already. Yeah, yeah honest, same here. Because, same. Yeah, the fans are fucking pissed off of what's happened with the negotiations and this whole situation. I'd be surprised, to be honest with you, with this second wave and the fear mongering that they're trying to get us to buy into again. The NFL even starts this year. That's just me. I, I actually wholeheartedly agree with you. And, you know, Dan and I did a show a week ago. Um, I, I get a call from a couple of GMs who had said, look, privately, we're, we're moving back the season to, to week five. And uh, four games will be played at the end of the season. The Super Bowl will start um, at, at uh, the last week of, the, of February. And then there would be no preseason whatsoever. It hasn't been announced. Dan and I got, have been getting crushed for it. But um, I, I, the rumor is that they might move it back even further, if not into next year. And a lot of college teams behind the scene are trying to figure out a way to play an all-spring schedule. Um knowing that there will probably be a vaccine by the end of 2020 or January of 2021. Um, do you think NFL or any of those guys even go? Because that's even more contact than baseball. No, I mean, that's that's the deal. If baseball players are worried about it. Why wouldn't NFL guys? Yeah, you, like you said, they're on top of each other, breathing on each other. And are these football players going to be wearing masks when they play? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like, I, I can't imagine being out in that hot, hot field wearing a mask, trying to breathe. I mean, I don't know, man. And the social distancing rules they were trying to implement in Major League Baseball where you had to be six feet away in the dugout, there's 25 fucking guys in there. Yeah. <laughs> if, you do, if you do the math, these, these dugouts aren't that big. So how are you going to stay six feet away from your teammates? It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Listen, the misinformation that's going out there, like you said with Dr. Fauci, almost weekly, it's too much. It's enough to drive you fucking batshit crazy. Uh, honestly, like I said, it's just like a cock tease. There's no way. And I'm going to say it right now, none of these sports start up. Yeah, I, I agree. And speaking of which, uh, Fauci just got on about an hour ago. And he said uh, that he expects, he wouldn't be shocked, he said, in front of Senate if, if 100,000 Americans a day uh, got coronavirus, which this story is obviously going everywhere. So this is going to create even more fear. I, I don't think any of these sports are going to get going. And uh, and it's, it's going to be a long fucking... Uh, four months until we get to this election yeah. because let's face it, if there is no sports, that means they're just going to be jamming this election in our face every single hour of the day until November 3rd. Well, how is Biden going to do that? 
though, because he can't stay on camera for more than ten minutes without saying something stupid. Why? Well, I think that's part of uh, like they're, they, the Democratic that's, that's Party part has of their to decision. be. They have to be praying for sports to come back. Some kind of distraction. Or something. No, no, no. They, they, they don't. They don't want it. They want everything to shut down because they want coronavirus to be so deadly and so dangerous and scary. Mm -hmm. It keeps everybody in their homes, especially Biden in his basement. They know if we are able to start sports, then you know what. If sports starts, then we can start doing presidential debates. Right. And if you have presidential debates, Joe Biden's going to have to come out and, and debate Donald Trump, and that would be a fucking disaster I can't, for Democrats. I really hope it happens. I can't wait because I want to hear him. Like, well, here's what we know. All the stuff that's going on right now, the race stuff that's going on right now, here's what we know. The two things that are most associated with crime are fatherless homes and poverty, right? Yep. The Democratic Party has waged a war to make sure that black people stay impoverished because that's how they maintain their vote. Like that's what the welfare system is. It's not a, there's no, there's no like concept of upward mobility anywhere in the welfare system in, the, in this country. The other one is putting black fathers in jail, mm -hmm. which Joe Biden wrote the fucking bill for. Right. So I just want to hear him answer those two questions in some kind of way that doesn't accuse black people of not being black. If they don't agree with him. Right. I want to hear like a legitimate, like, I want to hear some kind of explanation for that mm -hmm. at some point, just for more of a curiosity. I would never vote for the guy anyways, because I know what the reason is. He's a racist old piece of shit, but I just want to hear it out of his. I want to see. I want, I'm very curious to hear what he's going to have to say about that. Yeah, and I, I agree with you, Aubrey. I think it's exactly what the Democrats want. Uh, they want you to live in fear, uh, live off of the, the paychecks, because let's face it, there'll be another some form of bailout coming to people if everybody's shut inside. And then uh, they're going to say, see, the economy tanked. Uh, you love Trump. And then he was all about the economy. The economy's shitty. Um, and I think, I think their strategy is purposely to keep him off of camera and let Trump try to run himself into the ground with some of these comments that he's made regarding the virus and, and the protest. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I'm, I'm still voting for Trump, and I'll tell you why. I got, my I got my stimulus check in the other day. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> I, I I got I got a check in them. I got a, something in the mail, and I'm like, what was you know? I open it up. It's a check for twelve hundred bucks, and I'm like, what? It's it was from Donald Trump stimulus check. I'm yeah. like, what? I, I how did I even get this? I love it. I love it. So, <laughs> <hold on. laughs> Aubrey, I guess, I guess that's that white privilege everybody's talking about. Yeah, dude, you've not made enough money. You need another twelve hundred on top of that. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. How was dinner that night? Uh, you know what? I haven't even cashed it yet. I still I, cuz I can't leave the house, remember? Everything's closed down. So Yeah, is that, is that still going on where you're at? Yes, yeah, it's, it's bad in California, but my buddy, I guess Fauci was just in Arizona and he was telling me how they are now since they're getting ravaged again that they're closing down bars, restaurants, everything once again, complete lockdown. And if that's happening in a in a, in a Republican held state, then it's going to start happening. You can bet your ass in California, New York, you know, all these democratically held. And once that happens, the whole, I bet, I bet the second lockdown is going to be more dramatic than the first one. That's my call. It's, yeah. it's close to the election. They want more fear. They want more division racially more than anything. Mm -hmm. And, it, and, it, and that, that division is like infiltrated into the sports world, Phyllis, yeah. you know, with the whole Drew Brees thing. I mean, that's just fucking ridiculous. This guy, you guys know the story. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you go out and just explain on air your beliefs on why you don't agree with kneeling for the anthem and you get fucking crucified as a racist? If you look at Drew Brees, he did in fact kneel in solidarity with his teammates in London. Mm. Then when the and when the uh, anthem on, he stood up and put his hand over his heart. You can have both. You can be a patriotic American and still care about the uh, injustices in, in these impoverished communities. Absolutely. And so it's it can't be this one way or another. Pick this or pick that. It's bullshit. It's all mm. a narrative. It is. Yeah, it's nonsense. And we see it uh, yesterday, actually, in sports with Ian Desmond, uh, who's, uh, you know, I don't know why he's decided. I guess a lot of people feel a lot of different ways about all this stuff. But some of the stuff he said is just uh, factually speaking incorrect. He said I, he, he lamented the fact that he's heard racist and homophobic shit in, in baseball locker rooms over the years. Like, yeah, you don't say, huh? Yeah. Why don't yeah. you come check out a fucking team room, homeboy? Yeah. And see how that right. sounds for you. Like, we talk the worst shit to each other that, that's possible. Whatever it is about you that defines you as a human being, your, your race, your gender, your sexuality, I'm going to fucking make fun of it. Yeah. Relentlessly, because I need to know that you and I are on that level. We have to be brothers. 
Like literally, we have to be fucking fighting on the same side and all this superfluous ancillary fucking nonsense that might hurt somebody else's feelings. That's stuff that we forego. We don't deal with that. The whole point of saying the stuff like that is to break down that barrier and say, you know what? None of this stuff is really that important. We're here to fight together. That's the whole point. That part is just fucking stupid. The part that he said that is factually incorrect, though, is that baseball has done nothing uh, to to correct some of the uh, like the fact that there aren't a whole lot of black baseball players. They have been spending since 1989 $30 million a year on the RBI program that, that, that uh, facilitates young black kids playing baseball in 200 cities in America, mm-hmm. the 200 biggest urban population centers in America. $30 million a year they spend fully funding Little League programs yeah. to make sure, because that's how you do it. You get young kids interested in sport. Mm-hmm. They get good at it. Then they see that they can make money at it, and they continue, and that's how you get into the sport. You can't just go fucking find – you can't go find people that are getting drafted for other sports and be like, hey, why don't you go and try baseball that you've never played before? It doesn't work that way. Yeah, the other, the other part about it to me, and you can <clears> tell me if I'm incorrect on this, Aubrey, is uh, to me, like, you know, as a young black kid, uh, most young black kids that I grew up with and were friends with wanted to be basketball players because it was cooler. Everybody wanted to be Michael Jordan. They wanted to, they wanted to fucking dunk. Um, you know, they didn't want to be a, a pitcher necessarily. There's nothing sexy about a strikeout, but there is something sexy about a guy jumping from the free throw line and dunking. So a, a lot of my friends, my black friends, leaned toward basketball just because it was cooler at the time. Um, so I'm not sure if the money and all that stuff would help. I mean, clearly the Dominicans, whatever, you know, skin color you want to say that they are they are people of color they have no issue with playing baseball so i'm not sure that that would that would necessarily help really to be honest with you because it's not viewed as something cool i can see why uh poor people and when i say poor people i mean uh young black kids in urban centers because out out in iowa and shit they play baseball right because it's like there's nothing else. There's there's just nothing else to do out there. But like, I can understand why they wouldn't play hockey because hockey is expensive as shit. Right. Like, if you have kids that play hockey, you know you're spending fucking two to three thousand dollars a year on equipment and bullshit. And pe- these people just the poor people aren't, aren't ever going to be able to afford that. Baseball, you need a glove. You need yeah. a glove. Well, that's that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I look. I mean, I grew up in in Texas, and in Texas, it was football and baseball. Right. And right. I, that's what I grew up loving baseball. That's what I played. And I'm with you, Ross. I mean, when you're when you're a young black kid in America, typically you're playing football or basketball, mm. and that's, that's how these kids grew up. I grew up as a baseball guy, and it has nothing to do with race, but everything to do with how much you worked at that sport growing mm. up as a young kid. And now, you know, I you know, I think Desmond tweeted out that there's only eight percent of a, a black American baseball players. Yeah, that may be true, but there's also 30% of Latinos in Major League Baseball mm-hmm. who right. are just impoverished in these third world communities as well. So the, the fact that this whole privilege bullshit is the narrative he's pushing is absolutely not only un- untrue, it's fucking dangerous. And yeah. that's what pisses me off is this, you know, this poor victim mentality that he's throwing out there when, I mean, the guy, he's a career 260 something hitter and he has a 310 base percentage. He's got 70 million in the bank. Well, they've paid him. The Rockies have paid him sixty million dollars uh, since twenty seventeen to post a wins above replacement of minus three point eight. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you've you've effectively lost your team four games for sixty million dollars. Congratulations, yeah. Ian. And he's losing right here too. Uh, if you're, I always say this because one of my old uh, military leaders used to tell me all the time: if you're in a position where you feel like things are unjust or unequal or, or unequal rather or anything like that, work hard, rise to a position of authority, and then affect change. And he's got the ability to do that. It's not by fucking whining. Right. Like you don't, you, don't throw, you don't take your ball and go home. If you're a black man in baseball right now, you fucking try to get black kids playing baseball. Yeah. Get out yeah. there and fucking and, and proselytize for your sport. It's on you to fucking do that. I can't. I'm a white dude with a beard. You're a white dude with a fucking uh, missing goatee. Now, your goatee's MIA. I don't know what happened to it, but. Uh, I look like a sperm. Like, Aubrey Huff is not going to encourage inner city black kids to play baseball. Right. And it's not on you to do that. It's just not, it's not feasible. It's not reasonable to expect that. Ian Desmond can absolutely accomplish that. But he instead, he chose to fucking cry like a little bitch. Well, that, that's, the, that's the other thing, too, is like it, not only was it it's about it's racial, the, it's the privilege deal. He also like made comments that, you know, that, like it's in the locker room, Dan, the homophobic and and uh, all these other, you know, the major baseball has a problem in the locker room with with racism, homophobic remarks and all these nonsense issues. You know, 
like you said, when you're in a major league baseball clubhouse, NFL clubhouse, you know, people talk about Donald Trump you with that grab him by the pussy bullshit. Listen, <laughs> I, we, we, we talk 50 times worse than what Donald Trump said in that bus in a clubhouse. And for any player that suggests otherwise, they're fucking lying to you. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, it's, that's not a major league baseball problem. That's a fucking guys in the locker room talking shit issue. Mm. And what happens in the clubhouse stays in the clubhouse. And a lot of these fucking young players have somehow forgotten about that shit. And that's why major league baseball has a problem get and sports in general has a problem because they are no longer keeping veteran guys that know the code and know how to play the game the right way and grind it out and know the value of hard work. These young kids now have been grown up selling their special and they're do anything they want. And it's, it's, it's being overrun by these young participation trophy winners. That's all it is. Yeah. And from the Hollywood perspective of it, like, you know, you guys, you were in a, a locker room, Dan, you were in a team room, mm. me, I, like I'm a comedy mm. writer, right? So I was in a comedy writer's room. The writer's room is the most ruthless fucking room of all time. They're saying the worst <laughs> shit you could possibly say about people. Now everybody's concerned about race or what you, you know, can and can't do. That's why comedies are yeah. going out the window. Like, how can you push the limits until you know where the line is? Yeah. Like, I don't know who it was that said that. I, th I think it may have been Dave Chappelle, maybe. But he was just talking about how, or actually it may, may not have been him, but some comedian said that one of the points of comedy in general is to find out where the line is for society. Like you say progressively more fucked up shit until somebody has a problem with it. Yeah, you know and, then, I mean? and then you're like, all right, cool, maybe I pushed it too far. You're going yeah. to miss in comedy and everything else, but that's how comedy writers' rooms used to be. But you have to they talk were ruthless. about it. You were getting the best content because yeah. people were closer. You were picking on one another, saying mm. the most horrific shit you possibly could yeah. and then writing about it. And it's about the intent, too. Like, the intent is to make people laugh. It's not to be a dick. No, like, and it's if, not if to you're... belittle somebody or make somebody feel less than. You're just trying to test out some of the funniest shit you can. Yeah, like if you... Uh, not not to get super racist here, but if if you're playing with Latino players and you make a bunch of fucking fucked up, like racial comments about them being Latino, my expectation is that they are going to talk some shit about me be eating macaroni and cheese with hot dogs cut up in it. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> like that's 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 what I've grown to expect. Like all my black friends in the military talked, especially Enoch Bostic. That guy's a piece of shit. Uh, he <laughs> he would talk so much shit to me, like un, un, an incredible amount of shit. Uh, especially Dude, my, my, my nickname. My nickname in uh, in college was White Trash. Yeah. That's, what, that's what they called me. And, yeah. Hey, tra trailer, trailer trash, what's up? You know, I didn't care. It's, no. It's what you laughed at. Yeah, and, and to be fair, uh, for the most part, white people haven't been discriminated against because they're white trash by other races. But we have, like, that. that's the point of this division. So once, once Americans, once white Americans in Indiana and Iowa – figure out that they're on the same side as black Americans in Chicago and the, and the side they're on is against the fucking government and their bullshit trying to take advantage of us and steal our money. The government's going to be in real trouble. Right. And they're trying, they're fighting tooth and nail to make sure that doesn't happen. Imagine that like every time we see one of those scenes at a protest where you see a bunch of fucking white and black people together and everybody's armed, like every, everybody is like, Oh, that's pretty dope. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Maybe we should just do that motherfucker and realize that we're all on the same side poverty is a disease and it's something that we have to cure and if there are systemic issues that need to be dealt with we have to have the courage to deal with them right instead of fucking well, we're, we're seeing that we're seeing a lot of I, i've seen quite a few of those type of videos oh yeah but by and large i guarantee you that's happening across the country more than you know but the mainstream media will never show it to you no the only no. time we see those things is by somebody that's a conservative guy post it onto their website mm -hmm. or their YouTube channel. <laughs> and what's interesting about that is I don't think what many people don't know in this country is, you know, in my d direct messages box, I get support. I've been, you won't believe the names guys of uh, A-list actors and entertainers, professional sports stars of every walk of life um, and powerhouse Republican, like hard hitting politicians have been in my direct message saying, Hey bro, thank you so much for what you're saying. We completely are with you. And I'm like, well, and the universal thing I ask is like, why aren't you guys speaking out? Why aren't you guys stepping up? Well, you know, the number one answer isn't, you know, whether or not they'll lose their job and being censored. That's part of it. Most of it, they say, though, is that they're scared for their families and the safety of themselves. And that's fucking scary, man. When you live in a world that you can't even no longer voice your opinion, your beliefs and values, your First Amendment rights, literally our right to breathe, then we're, we're in a fucked up situation. Yeah, even if you're wrong. 
I say this all the time. Bad ideas don't get exposed and so, like all all this stuff about uh, now. Like now's the time just to keep your mouth shut and listen. Like no, it's not. Now's the time for everybody to be talking and let's figure out what good ideas are and what bad ideas are because bad ideas don't get exposed in silence. They just they fester and then these these poor like impoverished white conservatives hear all day how much worse everybody has it and how much privilege they have just because they're white that is you have to understand how fucking unacceptable that is for somebody to hear like their brain automatically shuts off as soon as somebody says some shit like that and i go back to the kneeling for the flag thing the kneel regardless of what you believe about it it did draw a lot of attention and that was the point so it was successful but continuing to do it you've already got the attention everybody in america is talking about this right now so now the point of kneeling for the flag is just to do it to thumb your nose and say yes yeah we can do whatever we want which is true but you're not accomplishing any goal the people that you're trying to convert the 45 percent or so of conservatives who don't here's what they see from blm <clears throat> they see an organization instead of a movement they see an organization of a bunch of fucking marxist retards that don't know fucking shit about anything they're a bunch of dummies, right? And they're trying to co-opt the movement. The, the, the concept, the ideals behind Black Lives Matter as it exists makes sense, right? right? But the organization is garbage. It's fucked up. It's almost like our government. Like the Constitution, the idea behind America makes a lot of sense. It's, it's worth fighting and dying for, in my opinion. But the execution by the government is bullshit. So it, we're all in the same fucking boat here. Right. We're, all, we're all making the same complaints about all this shit. But for some reason, we've been trained to take sides against each other instead of against the goddamn government. Like, what the fuck? And it's it's only going to continue. By the way, did Ian Desmond ever hit you back? Like, did any of these guys that you call out ever hit you back? No. I, uh, let's see. No, Desmond hasn't yet. That was a tweet this morning. I don't, I don't expect him to either. Most guys, you know, don't. The only people that hit back usually are some of these uh, D-list celebrities. You know, Alec, no, Billy Baldwin, Tom Arnold. <laughs> you know, they, they come at me. Tom I live Arnold. in Billy Baldwin. That, that guy's in my D, in private, me- not private message, in my verified comments all the time. He wakes up thinking about me. And I don't even know who the fuck this guy was. I had no idea who Billy Baldwin was. I thought it was like, I thought, oh, but ooh, is that Alec, the, the famous one? And then and I was disappointed when it was just Billy. But <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, most, most, most athletes, they won't touch it. Um, just because they know, I think how political I can be, and and I just throw out facts, man. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna fire out shit, you know, I'm gonna bring that locker room factual shit right back at you, and most mm. people can't handle it. And I'm just I'm tired of hearing all the excuses from people, whether you're white, black, brown, yellow, whatever. This whole you know young generation victim card mentality. It's not a racial thing to me. It's a victim card mentality. Right. And I'm sick right. of it. You know, work hard. I don't give a shit what color you are in this country if you do the work you grind it out i don't care how you grew up i grew up in a fucking trailer park with my dad died at six years old i didn't have nobody in the big league to, to give me a chance i had to work my ass off with a single mother working two jobs hitting baseballs every day don't tell me about fucking privilege i work my ass off and i'm sick of the excuses and the bullshit and the divide and so i'll call you out on any kind of fucking bullshit victim card mentality uh, man, uh, sp- we got some sponsors here. Mm-hmm. I, I, we get to talking with Aubrey. We can just fucking chat all goddamn mm-hmm. nights. Uh, but I always forget we have sponsors that pay for this show. Um, afterwards, I want to ask you about your social media accounts in particular. Because you've been on a fucking tear on your social media uh, recently. Uh, first and foremost, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off everything in the entire store. Mattresses, sheets, pillows, uh, adjustable bases, the covers. All of it's 25% off, and if you get a mattress, you get two free pillows for free. As always, they've got a 36-month pay-as-you-go program at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, Um, and uh, it's it's the best in the biz. Next up, we got killcliffcbd.com. Killcliffcbd has got 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. Uh, Grape is my favorite, by the way. Um, Orange Kush and mango are the three flavors. There is no THC in these cans, so you will not piss hot on a drug test. Let's face it, if you're gonna take CBD these days, you've gotta go with a name you can trust. Kill Cliff is the only name you can trust in this space. Go to killcliffcbd.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you 20% off a case and free shipping, and that's big. Usually mm-hmm. those cans are expensive yeah, when you is. ship them. Killcliffcbd.com, promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off. 
Uh, last but not least, D'Anthony, we've got GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Get your fucking boner on. Were you on last time when we were talking about boner pills, Aubrey? Yeah, I was still waiting for my free sample. I never got it. <laughs> well, here's what we learned. The free sample is going to be just a bunch of dick pics for me showing off my boner. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry. It <laughs> is. Yeah, you're welcome for it. Every last inch of it. So we asked. We hit them up. We were like, hey, man, th- we've had some guest requests for some boner pills at Roman. They were like, oh, shit. Well, legally, since it is some form of prescription, they were like, we can't just send your friends boner pills in the mail. And I was like. Yeah. And so what they, they go, look, it, it's a free online visit. Um, you know, you don't have to see a doctor in real life or anything. It's like five questions. You check out, boom, you get free shipping. And then the boner pills come to your house in three days in a discreet package. So your wife or your mistress or your kids, uh, or even if you're fucking your uncle, you know, over 4th of July, he mm. won't know. <laughs> go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros today. Whether you have erectile dysfunction, or you just want to fuck recreationally. Uh, you can do it now. And since we're going to be locked in for a while, might as well get a, a mattress and uh, some boner pills. It yeah. looks like. Yeah, I mean, just like. in just in general, you spend uh, a third of your life asleep. Yes. And if you're like me, you spend another third of your life fucking. So it's like, boom, you, that's two thirds yeah. of your life, sixty six percent right there. Yeah. Uh, are, we, ta- are we talking jerking off? Come on, man, you're not fucking a third of your life. A lot of that's jerking off. There's no way. It's mostly, if not all, jerking off actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I want to talk about your social media, dude. Your Instagram, too. Like, Because after you did the show, I started following all your shit. I'm like, there's no way he's this crazy in real life. Um, sure enough, you don't give a fuck. What is the response uh, for women? Because you post a lot of fucking female-driven <laughs> shit. Of like, uh, do, do you get a lot like of uh, negative responses from women? Of like, holy I, shit, I, I can't believe he says negative, that. I get a lot of negative responses from the wrong women. The radical feminine. <laughs> The bitches I don't care about uh, anyway. Yeah. But I get a lot of love from real, confident, conservative, awesome, gorgeous women. That's the women I get a lot of love for. They love toxic masculinity. That's what a woman wants. They don't want some beta. A real woman doesn't want a beta bitch boy. And and if you and for these toxic, radical feminists, they don't want you either. So I would rather take my shot at being a toxic man and get the real good girls. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. just basic marketing right there. You don't go after somebody outside of your TAM, your total addressable market. Like, mm-hmm. there's no point in advertising to them. No. You know what I mean? No, you don't. Yeah. That's don't. why I've stopped sending dick pics to lesbians entirely. I haven't sent one probably in 25, 30 minutes. E- easily. Dan stopped that right before we went on air. Yeah. Um, you, you took the last one, you hit send, and then we went on air, and you were like, I'm, I no should, more, I'm yeah. stop doing yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you get any fucking nudes in your DMs? You know, I get a lot of... Uh, girls asking me for dick pics and just a little disappointment for you ladies i don't do that because i have a celebrity cock and if i take that out there you know and i have a really bad cut on the left so i am circumcised but it's a bad cut so i had this where it leans left a little bit <clears throat> and so you will definitely be able to know which if it's my mm. cock real so I don't do dick pics so michael j fox did your circumcision is what you're saying <laughs> i don't know man he had to be the, the doctor was definitely high or drunk or something so you got a bad you you got a, you got a bad circ what do you, can you see too much pink skin is there what happened on that one so they're just like the left side is not cut all the way so it kind of just angles a little bit left and up Ooh. which is interesting because i've found that sometimes women they're like wow that's the best i've ever had i've never had that angle before you know? oh got it got it got it yeah that's, yeah. that's definitely yeah. something new yeah. <laughs> um, look, if you're looking into getting research, um, it's a look, I'm an amateur uh, at that field, but I enjoy it. We do a lot of at home surgeries. Yes. Drinker uh, Bros does. Just yeah. as amateurs. I don't know. That's a little that's a little uh, concerning that you would be talking about that right now. Yeah, I don't know about you working on my. Is that you're talking about working on my penis right now? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about recircing you. So I would give some a guy like you a snow's <laughs> cut is what I like to call it. Um, that's that's where I take two uh, jagged rocks because you want to do it all natural. Obviously, you want to feel it. You want to feel yourself as a man. And I bash those together and I recirc you. And then I take some fresh snow and then I pack that in. That's called a snow's cut. Um, now, okay. A princess cut is different. If I'm going to give you a princess cut, obviously, it's gonna it's gonna be in a, a little crown, and that that little crown part's gonna go over the top of your penis. Um, so you're gonna have a little kind of a, a princess crown over the top of your penis. That's a princess cut. Now for that, I'm using a box cutter. I um, use, and again, uh, I don't do a lot of these. I'm an amateur uh, mm. hobbyist in, uh, in the circumcision world, but uh, 
You know, I, I'm looking to become pro. One I've day. avoided the surgeries, and I just use you know those little helmets they put on like falcons. Mm-hmm. Let's put one of those on there. Oh, yeah, a tiny falcon. Little helmet falcon helmet. helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I I would like to put a little ice cream sundae helmet on that you get at the ballpark. Oh yeah, right can now. you imagine what? showing up and you're about to bang some girl and you take a helmet off your dick? <laughs> And she's like, what the fuck is that? Like, well, it's either one of two things. Either your dick is retarded, right? Or and it has to wear the fucking helmet. Yeah. Or my dick is dangerous. Yeah, real dangerous. So it's one of those two things. And either way, you can't go wrong. Well, I, I figure this. You know, I've always wondered if I did cut that part of my dick, yeah. it, it might give me an extra inch to mm. really explode up. And, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm your average six you know, inch white dude. I feel like that's good enough. I don't want to feel the pain and the recovery. of. I don't know. I can't imagine the pain that would go through. Yeah, getting researched like that at this age, man, it's it's a difficult one. I've got to do it every couple of weeks. It's like trimming my fingernails almost. Yeah, because he's got regenerative skin, right? Yeah. It just keeps growing back like yep. a starfish. Yep. How's your sex life these days? Are you, are you crushing the cougars? How's that cougar life out there? You know, in California, it's, it's actually where I live especially. It is a cougar target rich environment. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got two kind of women that really go for the – the young Instagram model, 25 year old that don't have anything going for themselves except for OnlyFans. They love me. I'm more of like, um, you know, the big daddy, sugar daddy kind of guy, right? They yeah, they, they no, want to travel. Like, yeah, it's all of those hot travel. Instagram girls yeah. who want to travel, but they don't have jobs. And you're safer than some Persian businessman. Right, right. Yeah. And, like, I got a few of those crazies, but then yeah. I also got the 40 plus year old divorcee cougar here that's got her issues and baggage and she drinks a lot. And so that's another one. So the, it, I got two separate ones that really like me, but none of those options are really viable for a long-term kind of thing. So, you know, I'm just having fun, man. I love my freedom. I love being single. I was the married guy for 11 years, got two kids. Why would I do it again? I'm circumcised. Not circumcised. I am <laughs> cut. I can't <laughs> Uh, so I can't have kids. I mean, I'm living the I'm living the dream. Again, if you keep that uh, if you keep that little falcon helmet on there, you don't have to worry about a vasectomy at all. Not at all. And again, <laughs> I'm I am happy to do this for free. It is a hobby of mine. I don't have enough people to work on, so I'll recut you. I'll give you that snow's cut you've been looking for. I use a laser. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that. I really appreciate it, brother. I'm gonna pass, uh, respectively, of course. No, uh, but do me a favor. Tuck it in your back pocket. Don't get. You don't have to give me an answer right away. Not today. Um, <laughs> okay. Come back to I'll me. Sleep on it. Yeah, I, I just I don't have enough people to work on down here, and uh, I'm looking for more experience. You you can you can only become a professional after you have enough hours. It's like a it's like a pilot. You know, I need enough hours to fly. You you know you were, were you're uh, in California. It's sixteen hundred hours to cut hair. Is it really? That's how much fucking apprentice time you have. Yeesh. I've got yeah. about eighty worth of uh, circumcision hours. So and you can I'm you way can, behind on that. You can ask Jared about how how many hours you need to fly in a major airline. It's not that many. Oh really? Yeah, it's not as many as you would think. <laughs> Yeesh. My wife cuts hair. Uh, well, she doesn't fly planes. No, but I mean, she's done the sixteen hundred hours. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's That's wild. Crazy. Yeah, she did cut hair in California. She yeah, had to she do that whole cut thing. hair in California. Yeah. yeah, one of my friends did it once, and I'm like, wait, so you're going to work for free for six months? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm. yeah that's no. what you have to do. For, to cut hair? Like, how? what's the result of a bad haircut? You wait two weeks and get another one? What the fuck, man? Yeah, like, it's not crazy. that dangerous. No, it's really it's not. not. It's not as dangerous as not having that Falcon helmet on your dick, which, again, I recommend. I'm not. Recommend it. I don't own the company or anything, but they are paying me. No, but if, if you know, someone wants to reach out, we could uh, maybe get some Drinking Bros logos on those things. I'm I down. would do that, yeah. I'm Absolutely. definitely down. Yeah. Um, so, in your opinion, Major League Baseball definitely is not coming back. Therefore, me asking you who's going to win the World Series is fucking worthless, correct? Well, yeah, it's worthless. But having said that, if you play a 60-game season, and in fact it does happen, then, my friend, it becomes more important every game. Mm-hmm. You know, it'd be more like an NFL kind of scenario where, you know, every game matters. You lose a series. You lose seven straight at 162. It doesn't mean shit. Yeah, right. You lose seven straight. Now you're, if you're a, like a number one contending team coming in and you lose the first, you know, seven of ten, you know, you're in trouble right out of the gate. So, what so do you, you know, I, I, my, the, big, the thing that I'm most curious about and the reason I wanted this baseball season to happen, aside from just uh, watching, like I – I grew up a big Greg Maddox fan because I'm autistic too, like he is. Clearly, he's clearly autistic. Is there any doubt about him being autistic? No, I'm okay, all good. in on that. So uh, I just like watching the game because of all the fucking shit that's going on. Like it's so – I love it so much. But uh, now for this situation, beyond all that, I was really curious how these teams were going to approach that 
shortened season? Like, are they going to go to a four-man rotation? Are they going to beef up the bullpen more and use more of that or what the case was? Hopefully it happens because I want to see that. But I'm curious what your thoughts are. Let's, let's say just for the sake of argument, the season does happen. What do you think Major League Baseball teams are going to do differently in a season that more closely resembles a college season than an MLB season? Well, I think in order to get as many games as they can and possible in this short window of time, your days off are going to be very limited. Mm. You know, really on a, on a 162, you're going to have a day off typically once, you know, every 10 days. Mm. Um, with, with a 60-game season, you know, these guys are probably going to be playing basically two months straight without any breather. Right. So, and trying to get a three-man rotation would be tough to do if you're playing every day. Mm. It's still, you're still going to have to maintain um, a four to, I'd say four-man rotation mm. starting pitching-wise. But, yeah, they're going to be using bullpen guys like they would in the playoffs because every game is yeah. going to mean more. Um, the games are going to be longer. Mm. Uh, you know, the DH, I think it's going to be a universal DH, which yep. uh, will make the game even longer because you're not, you don't have to pitch your automatic out. So, you know, it'll definitely be a different game. I like the fact that, you know, if, if they're trying to, you know, keep people away from the COVID situation, the travel from the – it'll be interesting to see these different teams playing each other from the West Coast, East Coast, and Central. So you're not having coast to coast travel. You'll have matchups that you typically don't see on a daily basis in a regular season. So that would be fun. But again, it has to happen, which I don't really think it's going to. Who would you have picked gambling wise um, to win it all? And if, if there was a 60 game season? I, I think, honestly, for me, I, the, seeing how the Tampa Bay Rays did with the young talent they have and the energetic they are, that's the kind of team that would be dangerous in a short series. Yeah. Short short season mm -hmm. because they're just dumb enough to not realize how good they can be and uh I, I would i would bank that with that young starting pitching they have and the youth to be able to withstand playing every day they would give you a hell of a run and uh i would give them a hell of a shot to get all the way and that's it, they're a very talented young team and so it would be it would have been really nice to see them give it a whirl that's an interesting take you're the only one i've heard that from and it, it makes sense when you say it but you know everything that i've read as soon as they announced the 60 game season was going to be yankees dodgers essentially yeah but people have been saying yankees dodgers every year for a while now well the dodgers have gone every year so it's fair yeah. like it's fair to say um but uh, the, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. I mean, shit, if this season does go down, no, I, I get it. If it goes down, I will throw a little cash on there. I could see it. Yeah. I mean, they've got a good team. They've got – I, I think your point about them being too dumb to realize the pressure they're under, like they're all young guys. Like mm -hmm. last year, what did they win, like 98 fucking games or something? They won – they won a shit. And they, they that all, roster – they almost beat the Astros in yeah. Game Five. Yeah, you know, so they won the World Series, so they got a hell of a shot. Look up, look up the odds on mybookie.com. Okay. Uh, by the way, so if if this does go down, uh, we've been gambling on mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will give you 150 percent of your deposit back. Um, I went hard, by the way, on Joey Chestnut uh, on mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. Um, the hot dog eating champion. He was on just yep. before you. This is this is uh, pre-taped for next week, um, but because uh, I'm going to be out of town. But uh, you could actually bet on the hot dogs there. And for a guy like you, Aubrey, you can bet on the entire election. And it'll shock your mind that Joe Biden is now the favorite on mybookie.com. Well, I would, I would like to assume that uh, Hillary Clinton was a heavy favorite, too, in 2016. Am I <laughs> yeah, correct? She was. she was. Yeah, she was. Um, but for I mean, a sitting president, it's pretty strange to see yeah. uh, that, he, that they're um, not the favorites. No, no, I don't think so. Sitting presidents usually aren't very popular poll-wise going into the next election unless they're just really, really knocking it out of the park. Okay. Like, usually you see an approval, overall approval rating of somewhere between 43 and 46% okay. for a sitting president. Uh, here's an interesting one for you, Aubrey, on, on mybookie.com. Um, the second favorite to become d the Democratic nominee, should something, I guess, happen to Biden, is actually Hillary Clinton. You know, here, here's what I think is going to happen. Uh, my, my Hail Mary is it's going to be about a month before the election. Uh, there won't be any debates. They're going to throw this whole Black Lives Matter movement has kind of been a setup to throw Michelle Obama in there to about a month before. And if that happens, Obama is back in the White House mm. and calling the shots again because Joe Biden will be mentally unfit. Or even if he is, they're just Obama will be telling him what to do. And I believe that's what the agenda is. Call me crazy, tinfoil hat, but I really don't think it's going to be Hillary Clinton. People are sick of that shit. Yeah. It's going to be Michelle Obama, and you have your first female black 
the United States president. Yeah, if, Michelle Obama is wildly popular. It, yes, if she won, if she was running today, she would probably win, and it, I don't think it would be close because of what's going on in America today. Um, you know, climate-wise, as far as culture and, and everything like that, uh, her memoir also was the highest-selling memoir of all time. I mean, there is no debating how popular she truly is. So I'm with you on that. If she were to somehow get in there, I, I do think she wins. Um, I, I think in, in that she. Uh, I think if Biden had her as VP, she would that they would win. Correct. To I did too. Uh, but I, I don't think that's she doesn't want happen. the job though. I think uh, I heard from what I'm hearing from people on the left is there's a decent chance at least that Tammy Duckworth is going to be the VP nominee. I've, I've heard that as well. The problem is I don't know who that is. And I physically had to look her up. She's a veteran from Illinois. Yes. Lost both legs in combat. Yeah. Uh, so I had, to, I had to look her up because she's not been gaining a lot of press. But, she was big uh, in 2016, but nobody's heard about her since then. Correct. Essentially. Um, but that would that would be help a little bit, but I don't think that'd be enough for Biden. I just heard about her just now. I didn't know who that was. Yeah. I thought it might be Stacey Abrams, but it seems like that she was trying to endorse herself, and he didn't even give her a, a time of day. <laughs> yeah, so, she yeah. she made a she made a couple of gaffes at a at a presser, and she was out after that. Um, the the favorites, according to mybookie.com, are Kamala Harris. She is the odds-on favorite for VP, uh, and then number two is Elizabeth Warren. Kamala Harris makes oh. sense, but her record is just as like. If you run Kamala Harris, then the entire ticket is two people that have put black men in jail. Yes. Like for 30 goddamn years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, there's just no way, man. No fucking way. So that's kind of what uh, the odds are saying. And um, Well, speaking of odds, so here it is for the AL pennant. Okay. Uh, Yankees are plus 155. Astros are plus 375. By the way, is anybody – Benefited more from COVID than the Houston Astros? No. In the history no. of fucking sports? Holy <laughs> shit, dude. They owe China everything. They do. I, I'm pretty sure that somebody over at Houston had something to do with this coronavirus. <laughs> uh, because they were just like, I hope they play the Yankees every single game, and I hope Aralis Chapman comes in every single game. Well, with a fucking 10 run lead, so he can hit the first three guys and strike the next three out. Maybe next year. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Th that's plus 375. Then the next one is well this is not in order so the red sox at plus 2000 indians at plus 1000 uh the rays are at plus 1000 oh that's a great bet then ahead of them are the twins at plus throw, 850. Throw 100 bucks on that baby yeah, yeah. you are good to go for the world Shit. series uh the best odds dodgers plus 370 or plus 325 yankees plus 400 then it goes into the thousands after that uh astros at 1000 the braves at 1800 i think the Braves would be a good pick, too. Tampa Bay Rays at 2,200. I mean, you could make some serious bank. I could see God them damn. winning the World Series. They're a yeah, fucking good team. Yeah, and you don't know in a 60-game season. I, it's funny. If you if you use your applied method to uh, the Braves, the Braves are the same way. They've got a really young team. Mm. And, uh, you know, they do have some playoff experience, although last year was not sweet. Um, you know. Well, they've – I mean, the Rays have run. Glasnow and uh, Blake Snell and Charlie Morton. They all have pretty good – postseason experience and success the Rays, in the postseason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Braves, on the other hand, their young pitchers don't have a whole lot of postseason experience. Remember that game? It was I think it was game five, and it started off, and it was 15-0 to zero in the first inning. Yeah. And um, I thought about bordaining myself mm -hmm. uh, on that one. Well, sometimes you got to. Yeah. Yeah, but that's interesting, the Rays. Um, shit. If this does, if some, by some grace of, <clears throat> of whoever you believe in, Dan's is Allah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um if that happens, then uh, I, the Rays would be a great bet in that for a sleeper pick. And I think the Braves would be too. Because uh, that makes sense. You're, you were literally the only one who has said that, though. I've never heard that from anybody else. Well, if you, if you have a, a shorter series as well, I don't know how, I don't know what the playoffs are lined up. Are you going to have a seven game World Series or is it a five game World Series? And if that's the case for the Dodgers, that might be a good thing because then you don't have Clayton Kershaw pitching that many games. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that fucking guy. Best regular love, season pitcher of all time. He pitches in the he's fucking postseason the way Shaq uh, shoots free throws. Yeah. Like, it's just not good, man. Regular no, he's season. A great, he's a great guy. Great guy, mm -hmm. but just – and he's a great regular season pitcher. But if for whatever reason, man, those lights get turned on the postseason, man. That deer in the headlights, those eyes are so big. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I think the Diamondbacks might have a decent – a better shot than people think, too, because they've got, like – 
they've got some pretty good pitching, and now they've got Madison Bumgarner, who doesn't have problems pitching in the postseason. Right. So if they sneak in from that West, even as a wild card, they're going to be dangerous in the playoffs. <laughs> Archie Bradley closing games and fucking Madison Bumgarner's your number one. That's a fucking good one-two punch right there. But Archie's got a hot girlfriend now, and that changes people. Maybe, yeah. She's you know? uh, she's dragging him all over the place, but he's got nothing better to do right now anyway. No, nobody does. Uh, he's This is the second time you brought up Archie Bradley's girl the last two times. I've got to Google this girl and just check her out and see what she looks like. Yeah, so yeah. He, he was, when he was on the show, he told us she was hot. And, he, and we were like, come on, you're a closer with some money. You're, you're great. And I was like, I bet you. And he goes, yeah, dude, I got a... I get a great girl. And so we looked her up and, you know, we're all friends now. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I go, watch out, Archie. This is going to change your pitching now. Um, you know, you were aggressive and hungry. What's this going to do to you, my man? Um, you know, because it always comes down to a Yoko eventually. Well, is she a Delilah or is she, you know, uh, what's the other one? Fuck, I can't remember. Uh, shit. Delilah is the, uh, the type of woman that robs you of your power. Then there's the type of woman that gives you more power, right? So you got to find the latter of those two, obviously. You don't want to fucking Yoko. <laughs> the reason I got married in 2003 was because I started hanging out with my future wife. We started banging, and I tell you, I hit, two, I hit 311 with 34 bombs and 107 ribbies. Got my first three-year $15 million deal. I'm like, she's a keeper. Yeah. you got to find one to have her center. What was it? Was she, did she say shit to you? Like, hey, man, you can fucking do better, or you're going to win today? You're going to be a goddamn champion No, today? when you, when you uh, ejaculate more, your body produces more natural testosterone. That's what it is. Like is that, that, that whole bullshit about fighters not pounding or uh, fucking before fights, that's retarded. That's the dumbest shit of all time. Immediately after, like uh, I think it's a three- to six-hour window after you fuck is when mm -hmm. your body produces the most natural testosterone that huh. it'll ever produce, which makes your eyesight better, makes your mu muscles better, everything. Is that true? It's, why are you I, asking him? I, it's science. I, I don't know. Usually I pat, I'm usually drunk, passed out sleeping. So if that testosterone is working, I don't know. But <laughs> you, you, I brought the Nikki Daly, though. Like most, my, my uh, ex wife, she never brought up baseball. It could care less. I think the woman you got to get in professional sports is the woman that doesn't give a shit. Mm. The last ah. thing I want to do is hear about a woman. Like, How was your game? Did you do well? I, what was on what, is dinner on the table? Are you ready to have some sex? That's all I wanted to hear. Right. I didn't want to hear the game. Yeah, uh, and you don't want to end up like uh, the natural getting shot in a hotel room by some girl that was a huge fan. Is it weird that when I when I think of the natural, like I think that's what's going to happen to you? Probably one yeah. day. I can't gonna... wait, man. <laughs> Just can't. Dan wait. dated some crazy women. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, <clears throat> I, I could see him getting shot in a hotel room one day. You know, we'll see. If he plays his cards right. Inshallah, cards Lord right. willing. Yeah. Um, what about NBA? Do you follow the NBA at all? If, if they were to come back, uh, who do you think in that? You know, I, I, I gave up on the NBA basically when Michael Jordan left. You know, I, I just stopped watching it. I kind of got into it a little bit. You know, we're obviously playing in San Francisco with the Golden State Warriors and their success. Yeah, it was fun. But since, they, since a lot of these guys have become so openly political, you know, this, you know, the, the, the Kerr, Coach Kerr, you know, Greg Popovich, LeBron James. I mean, it's just, it, I can't do it, man. I just can't do it. Sports, to me, athletes, just entertain us in the arena. I don't care if it's football, baseball, basketball. I don't want to, you can, you can have your thoughts and opinions. And that's why I wasn't political when I played, because I knew that fans just wanted to escape that world. Mm -hmm. you, go to, you go to movies, you go to sporting events to escape politics. And then when you're getting reminded of politics, like I think I just saw the other day where they were considering in Major League Baseball putting social justice warrior stances, names, where their names on the back of the jerseys would be. Correct, yes. I'm like, so you're, you're reminding fans of what they're trying to escape when you go to a game. It's absolute nonsense. And so, you know, I just think it's, it's, it's backwards-ass thinking for athletes. And I think a lot of athletes across all sports are going to be very surprised if, in fact, they do open up that they're going to get fucking crushed with attention, with money. Not, the average fan is just getting sick and tired of being called a racist. Why is the average fan going to come in and watch these guys play? Yeah, and uh, speaking of which, the NBA announced today that uh, on their courts there will be a Black Lives Matter logo. On I'm fine courts. with that. I just think they need to fucking uh, – I think some of these guys in power like LeBron James and et cetera who are choosing to be openly political while, during their career need to start taking a little bit – more uh, responsibility for policing their own people. When I say their own people, I don't mean black people. I mean the idea that Marxists have taken taken over the Black Lives Matter movement. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you have to address that at some point. Like 
LeBron James is not a Marxist by any stretch of the imagination. He is a capitalist. Right. He's a billionaire because yeah. of it. So he needs to, he needs to, that's what leads me to believe. I think that he doesn't necessarily, he may very well believe this, but I don't think so. I think he's getting paid off. If you have a platform that big, you have to have somebody in your ear. Somebody, I don't know. that You can't tell me that he supported Hillary Clinton back in the day. There's no way. You know, as a populist, alpha male basketball player, I can't imagine the shit you got in a clubhouse, right? I mean, maybe just speaking from Major League Baseball, but, you know, 80% of the guys I've ever played with guys in the Major League Baseball locker room were pro-America, pro-conservative, uh, capitalist, and they knew the value of what it took to get there. And I know LeBron James does, too. It's a lot of hard work and sweat and tears. So why in any athlete's right mind that makes that kind of money, work as hard as they get, want to endorse a Democratic Party that's ultimate goal is to destroy this country, to make it socialist, to where we're all equal the world doesn't we're all born equal but we don't all equally take advantage of the opportunities we all have mm. and so that's the biggest problem i i just don't i don't i agree with you and 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 part of that i don't understand how the modern black american can support the democratic party after like all of your ill-fated fucking lives if you're out there and you're struggling right now it's not because of conservative politics mm-hmm it's because Joe Biden wrote that 90 fucking four ninety five crime bill, right? right? That's that's a big part of it. The other part of it is systemic poverty, which has been uh, goaded, for lack of a better phrase, by fucking the welfare system. You know, I mean, it's like, how can you, you can't blame, just because Trump says stupid shit all the time and people on the right, for the most part, and look, people on the right deserve plenty of blame for not openly admitting that we have some problems here, uh, but... Right. They didn't create the problems, in my opinion. Like the the historical record's pretty clear. Like the the crime bill came from the Democratic Party, specifically the guy that's running for president right now. Mm-hmm. So what the fuck? Like what are we even talking about here? Yeah, man, it's it's weird, and it's only going to get weirder. Um, we appreciate you being on the show, mm-hmm. Aubrey. Uh, you always offer a, a unique perspective on life. <laughs> And uh, certainly one that is unique from any athlete that we hear from today. Uh, Where can everybody find you on social media? Yeah, so I'm at HuffDaddy76 on Instagram and at Aubrey underscore Huff on Twitter. Uh, Facebook, it's HuffDaddyDog. I don't know. Don't fucking ask me why it's called that. But that's where you find me. I got the podcast, obviously, Off the Cup with Aubrey Huff. Um, I post the video of it on my IG uh, Instagram. And it's also on being streamed on YouTube. But you can hear it on all all platforms, all podcast platforms. Yeah, we get some listeners who are chiming in. They're saying, uh, will, the, will the video show be available on YouTube? Yeah, it's it's going to start being downloaded, um, I think, today. Okay, great. Download- Great. Uh, look, we love when you're on the show. Thanks for coming back. We appreciate it. Uh, check out Off the Cuff with Aubrey Huff, the podcast, and follow this guy on all social media platforms. It's all day long. Uh, you are uh, hilarious all day long on, on Instagram and all that shit, dude. Well, it's, it's also really interesting. You, you check in with me usually past 5 o'clock anytime. I'm usually starting to drink then, and it gets a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey Huff, thanks for being with us today, man. All right, Rob. See you, Dan. Take see care. you, buddy. Aubrey Huff, man. That guy's entertaining as shit. He's funny. Uh, every single time. He's, he's actually, funny. a lot of the stuff he posts, like, it's the same as, as anybody. Um, if you just read the social media stuff in a vacuum, you think he's kind of a dick, but in real life, he's a nice guy. Sean Hannity's the same way. Like, if you, Hannity's a little calmer in the show now, but back in the day, he was a dick. Yeah. But in real life, he's always been super nice. And same, same with Shapiro. He's kind of a dick. But it's just because he's blunt. Uh, Aubrey's like one of those guys, a, a lot like us, actually, who spends half of his time kind of saying real shit and the other half just trolling people and being a weirdo because sure. it's funny and he's bored. Yeah. And uh, yeah. some people read that as him being a dick, but he's not at all. He's a funny guy. No, dude, funny guy. And, uh, again, if you follow him on social media, he does not give a fuck. No, nah, he's, he's uh, all in. Yeah, dude. <laughs> he reminds me of uh, Trump Jr., a little bit, yeah. Don Donnie Jr. is uh he's a funny guy. Like, oh, he's great on he, he's look, I mean, he's been a billionaire literally his entire life. Yeah. So it's like I, I don't take a lot of what he says seriously to be honest. Like he shows up 
wearing jeans and a fucking t-shirt, but it's a $400 pair of jeans. I'm like, all right, cool, man. I got it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but he is super funny. Like he posts the wildest shit. It's so funny. It's like, great. Tr- I don't know if it's his team or Trump's overall marketing team that makes that shit. The same as the daily wire, the memes that the daily wire posts are fucking mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah. I wish that that's why I'm so irritated more, more than just politically with the left is because they just lost their sense of humor entirely. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they should be trolling the fuck out of people and posting funny shit all the time. Yeah. And they're not. They're no. just like whining and crying all the time and nobody wants to hear that shit. Whereas Trump actually has a meme guy that works oh, for yeah. his, his office. Yeah. And that's I mean, all their their job is to put out fucking memes. There's probably a team of meme guys, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Easily. Easily. <clears throat> uh, now's the point in the show. We get to the drinking bro of the week. Uh, this one was submitted by Ben Strokapi. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, ben Strokapi from AB. I don't know where AB is. Um, Alberta. Uh, member of Drinking Bros for two years. Or the Aryan Brotherhood. It's one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have any racist tattoos? <laughs> There's no picture. Um, it's just a text submission. And we read it live, so we have no idea what we're getting into. Hopefully, it's not like my dad was killed by... We don't. We have know, no right? idea, but uh, let's a- see. AB is either Alberta or... Uh, or uh, the Aryan Brothers. Says he's so. been a member of Drinking Bros for two years, and he's not nominating Campbell Nye. N I. Reason for nomination is uh, this one comes from uh, north of your border. Ah, you got it right. Uh, but one of my best friends from the regiment gave so much more than one could expect. My family has a history of kidney disease, and my brother was in dire need of a transplant. With no cro- close relatives able to transplant, the situation was not looking good. Joking about having. Uh, matching blood types while looking over uh, our OR paperwork. Uh, Campbell did not hesitate to offer up his name to donate. Not once during the workup process did he hesitate and he successfully donated to my brother, giving my brother the chance to carry on and have a new lease on life. Thank you to Campbell, and uh, but just don't let this nomination go to your head, he says. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's good. Cheers. I mean, if I had donated a kidney to somebody, I would follow them around all the time and say, and, "Hey, man, like judge their diet. Are you? Fuck what, are you yeah. what are you fucking drinking? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Give my kidney back. And can you repossess a kidney like that Jude Law movie, Repo Man? Remember How that? Does that work? I don't know. I guess you just cut it out. Who? There was somebody super fan. I think it was Selena Gomez. She got one. I know. Dude, well, the, George Lopez got one from his dying wife. I was just gonna say that. So now. George Lopez got a fucking kidney. If you guys don't know this. I, George Lopez, some of his comedy is pretty funny. He's a piece of but shit. But he, he is a fucking garbage human being. Yes. Like, so he gets a kidney from his <laughs> wife, then she gets cancer, and he divorces her while she's dying of cancer. Yes. Yep. That is the like true you could, story of you George You could stick Lopez. it out a couple more hours. He's a fucking dick. Come um, on, guy. I, I've, I've never liked George Lopez. I don't think anybody likes him. Ever. I've never fucking liked People like dude. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey... No, nobody has anything bad to say about him. All you know, Steve yeah. Harvey, he's kind of made a career now out of incredulously staring at white people. Yeah, like, with he the sets, eyes like this. He's like, oh, oh. What the fuck, did you just say? Yeah, I love it. He does everything, man. He's got a he's got a fucking morning show. He's got an afternoon. He's got a talk show in the afternoon, yeah. and he's he hosts Family Feud. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 he he on Family Feud is hilarious, <laughs> or him on Family Feud is hilarious. He, he he might be the best Family Feud host ever. People don't understand how much money Steve Harvey has. He made a fuck ton off this book. Called, well, he spends uh, a lot of it want. on the mustache. Like it take. Do you, you know how much money it takes to upkeep a mustache like that? Oh yeah, and to keep his expensive. head polished all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like there's a guy expensive. right off camera with a buffer. Easily, and he'll come on in between the commercial breaks, whoo, just run it over there a little bit. He's got a fucking barber. Uh, on, on standby? Well, it's not a barber so much as it is a guy that works in, on cars that buffs his head out. But, I mean, what's the difference, you right? You still got to get that head shaved. Uh, I think it doesn't grow. Oh, really? Yeah. Shit. It's too, like, you. normally you'll see some stubble. So he's either got a guy that's really getting in there. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, how, how do you do, with it, do that with a head? You know I what I mean? Either, man. Like, if you shave your head in the morning, you're going to have some stubble by the end of the day, right? Yeah. You think so. I think. I don't know. One Let's find think. out. Let's kidnap Steve Harvey. I get, a, I get a few friends with B rings, bozo rings, mm. and, uh, you know, where it's just hair on the sides and uh, the full bozo up top. And those guys have to shave like every two days yeah. because the, the rest of the B ring grows out. And uh, I think I would just want it clean bald. Baker, do, Baker does that. it. I think, I think Baker shaves every day or two Oof. because it's not because he's going bald. I think it's because he's a ginger. 
I mean, was, he's ashamed of his red hair. And I mean, you should you should be ashamed of your red hair. Come on, <laughs> let's let's be real here. <laughs> Are his pubes red? Then? Uh, I've not seen them, but I'll ask. Ask him. We'll see if we can get a picture of those That's pubes. That's a fucking hard knock I mean, life. We did so. a good show with Baker the other day. We did about CrossFit. He's a funny guy. We but, did. Uh, Ginger. So yeah. Yeah. You know, what are you gonna do? You can only do what you can do. Uh, thanks for joining us, kids, on Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show again. Go to mybookie.com promo code Drinking Bros to bet. Uh, on all these sports, if they end up happening, I just don't know if they're going to be happening. But if they are, I, dude, I'm definitely throwing money in the Tampa Bay Rays. That, that, I've never heard that's that a good hot before. take. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Uh, it makes it makes a lot of sense. I mean, shit, it's not that not that wild of a prediction. They won. I think they won 98 games last yeah, year. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, I just it, it's one of those teams, man. You never fucking name one player on their team. I, I can't. Come on, you can do one. Uh, they've got a they've got a decent pitcher that they just picked up. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I know zero about the Tampa Bay Rays. It's one of those teams where every time they get a good team, it's like the Marlins. They unload all of them, mm-hmm. and then they start all over with a bunch of nobodies. Um, no one goes to their fucking games. Mm-hmm. What do they average like three thousand fans or something? Not three, many. 5, yeah, Tampa's fans. not a great sports it's city. Just uh, it's weird, man. It's it's like the Marlins. They they always seem to be good every like fourth or fifth year. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they sell all their players, their best players, and then they, they go into other organizations and crush. So I, I can't, I can't name one fucking Tampa Bay player. So let's see. There, this is their, this would be their opening day starting lineup. Charlie Morton, we know him. Yep. Uh, pitch for the uh, Astros and a couple of other teams. Yeah. Um, catcher Mike Zanino. Nope. Who's man? I have he's, no idea he, he's he's been around a little bit. You could um, say he was my uncle at Thanksgiving last year. There's no way I would know. G Man Choi. Who you might remember just because of his name, but nope. he's actually a really good hitter. No, nope. um, let's see, Brandon Lowe at second base, uh-uh. uh, Yandy or Yandy Diaz at third. Uh, no, Will, Willie Adams with an E, A D, or maybe it's Adamus. <laughs> I don't know how you say that. Uh, no, I've never heard of him. Austin Meadows and left. Eh, no, no, you don't know no, who that, no, is. No, that is. You definitely don't know who Austin Meadows is. Nope. Although he had 33 home runs last year, so you should know who he is. Um, let's see. In center field, Kevin Kiermeyer, Kermeyer, I don't know how you say his name. Bet. I loved his early work. Right field, Hunter Renfro, I know that name. Yeah, uh, And then their DH is Yoshim, uh, Yoshitomo something. Not going not uh, not not to be here next year. The point is no one knows who any of these people are, but they somehow None. last year managed to win a shitload of games. They also <laughs> fucking came within one game of going to the fucking ALCS. God, that's crazy. Yeah. What a weird world, man. It is. I mean, but they're those Florida teams, I don't know if it's something about having to wrestle alligators all the time. Or meth. Or meth, but mm-hmm. they seem to put together like all, those Marlins teams. Yeah. 97 and 2003, I think, where they yeah, won yeah, World yeah, Series. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. Marlins won the goddamn World Series? You kidding me? Yeah, it happens, <laughs> man. Uh, weird show. Thanks again to Aubrey Huff for being here. For D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show, which is now owned by China. Good night, everyone.